more than any other season. So I don't know what, what rugby league is doing right, but in both sides of the world, the southern and northern hemisphere, wow. uh, it's going uh, Have you heard the rumour about the NRL looking at buying the Super League? Yes. Becoming a majority investor? I heard about that, yeah. Majority yeah. equity holder, I Yeah, say. I, I'm not sure if they want to spend that money, but yeah. anyway, maybe, you never know. It could just be a headline to stir up the, okay. the Super League, but yeah. Now, with this one, with this player in profile, it's a little bit different. And this is the last, my last segment, a little bit different. Um, and you're going to have to help me out because you know this guy very well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's more about off the field than on the field with this, oh, pl- okay. with this player. But Julian O'Neill. But no. We've oh, already damn. done, we've done, we've already oh, done Julian. He's got um, the best off field. He has. He has. He and, I, and I tamed that down. <laughs> what <laughs> I read, I tamed of, it right one down. One of the greats. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, with this guy, uh, and let me make that mistake on field, he was outstanding as well. Uh, we're talking about Big Mark Geyer. Ah, MG. Big Mark. MG. Yeah. He was uh, born 1967 in Penrith, uh, mm. a little suburb called Whalen. Now, if you know Whalen like I know Whalen, um, if you uh, want to know what the Bronx in Australia looks like, that's where you go. You go to Whalen. Yeah. I don't know if you anyone. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have been to Whalen. I've done a job at Whalen, and I got scared when I when I went to Whalen. <laughs> um, the man ha- obviously has played for New South Wales, Australia, City. He's played for Penrith, uh, Balmain, U Minor, <laughs> if you remember that time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Western Reds, and he went back. Um, he went back to uh, Penrith. But like I said, the the real story for for this man is um, off the field. Uh, let me tell you. Let me tell you how he uh, got selected for for Penrith. He was at a trials mm-hmm. under sixteens, whatever it is, trials there, and um, he over he overheard um, he overheard one of the selectors say oh, that big kid uh, put him in the in the uh, uh, probables. So there's possibles. Sorry, put him in the possibles. Mm-hmm. So it's possibles or probables. Okay, mm-hmm. and he got put in the the team which the chances are you're not going to make it. He overheard that. He goes, he said something clicked in his head. He went back out. uh, (laughs) He went back out and absolutely nailed, smashed everybody, okay. What he didn't know, high up in the grandstands was Tim Sheen's watching. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. When Tim Sheen saw that 15 minutes, okay, he goes, Tim Sheen said, I had no doubt in my mind. I put a contract in front of, in front of him. And yeah. put him. Put him in the regis. Wow. Away. Yeah. Um, Great player. I've got a special. You, know, you finish. No, no, I'll no. no. T- tell me, tell me, tell me. I've tell got me, a special me. place in my history for Mark Guy. And I, hope, I would love for some way, some way, shape or form for him to actually see or hear this. I was in year 11. Obviously, I'm a lifelong Parramatta supporter. Hmm. 91 wasn't a great year, period. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but uh, I was in year 11. 91. Game two, I believe it was, Origin. Can what get, he did that night. Yeah, can we get to that? Oh, we'll get to that. I became a lifelong Me guy too. fan. Me too. Actually, follow yeah. him on LinkedIn. Me you wouldn't too. know who the hell I am. But I became a li- – I watched that game. I recorded it. I watched it so many times. He went out there and um, that was also, correct me if I'm wrong, a pretty special night for Wally Lewis. Yes. Because he knew how to get under yes. Gaia's skin and all yeah. that. But the way Gaia was, was dropping elbows, throwing punch, I loved it. Yeah. The, the shot that he put on, I think it was Paul Hoff, mm-hmm. and then he just picked up the ball and took off. I became a lifelong Gaia fan that yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. To this day, I'm I, still a fan. I, I can get that clip to I get him. excited when yeah. I talk about Mark Gaia. I can get that clip to him. Because I know somebody who knows him very well, who lives actually two doors down from him. Yeah, I'll clip it, give it to him, so I can give it to Mark. I am a lifelong okay. fan of, of um, um, Mark. So he's Greg Alexander's play. brother-in-law as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, let 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 let's forget about ninety and ninety-one then, because we know what happened. They lost one. They won one against Canberra. Oh, the, the result didn't matter. Wasn't that the night? Oh, I'm talking about the grand final. Sorry. Okay. It, um. Yeah. He was part of that. Uh, one of those tries where he picked up the ball. Yes. Uh, from the dropout. That, yes. or, that yes. origin yes. game, Fantastic. was that the night Michael O'Connor kicked it from the sideline in Beautiful. the rain? Thank you very much. I remember it like it was yesterday. Okay, so Mark Geyer, champion. So so that particular game, he made that same year he made uh made the origin. And the, the selectors came up to him and basically basically gave him the green light to do whatever he wants and to he do. Did. Yeah. So he's he was out, out on the mission. He 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 went and 
actually got really stuck uh, stuck into him and he unsettled him. Now, Wally Lewis says that he he worked out that that he was intimidating the whole team and they were actually starting to get, I don't know about scared, not the word, but they were, they were, they were coming off, okay? Mm. And Mark Guy was dominating the whole game. So in his mind, in Wally's mind, he said that I've got to do something about it. So he manufactured. He manufactured. I'm actually getting goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. Right? How cool. He manufactured that push and shove sort of uh, thing. Mm. And he said, and what Wally says, he goes, I was more scared than him. I was well, more can I tell you another petrified. Fu- can I tell you another funny story about that, mm-hmm. um, which I've heard Mark Guyer tell. And it was funny because it might have been 10 or 12 years ago. I can't remember exactly. They had an Origin Legends game at Parramatta Stadium. Yes, we'll we were there. We'll and they those two had a face off. It know. was all Gee. fun and games. But. I think I remember Mark Guy telling a story about um, when him and Wally Lewis came together mm-hmm. and Mark Guy, he goes, you know, I was, I was throwing punches or I was pushing people, whatever. He goes, next thing I look up and shit, it's the king, yeah. right? Wally Lewis is in front of him. He goes, I didn't know whether to hit him or ask him for his autograph. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he says and then that. it flicks over to Wally Lewis and he goes, well, he didn't ask me for my autograph. <laughs> 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 and I hope, I hope I recall that correctly. That's, that's what I remember. Yeah. But yeah. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what a special that that moment. Lifelong okay, fan. Okay, you said that that when you became a fan of Mark Guyer, I was yeah. a fan of Mark Guyer. When that happened, it solidified for me that Wally is the best rugby league player. Obviously. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to say. Because yeah. of what he does off yeah. the ball. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not. You know what? Sterling, Kenny were better yeah. rugby league players. Yeah. yeah, no doubt in my I mean, mind. You taught me that when I was a kid. No doubt in yeah. my mind. Yeah. But. Wally's got the ability to make everybody in that team better. Yeah. And and Guy went on to represent Australia. He yes. got, I think he got a, like I think it was a six week suspension six week after suspension. that, which was pretty huge in those days. Yeah. And, and, and and the bad part of it is that when he went to judiciary, okay, New South Wales didn't go in and back him up. I bet you Queensland uh, it, officials would have went and backed it him up. It wasn't a full time profession. Back then, I don't, I don't know if they brought lawyers to the issue. I'm not sure. No, but they didn't. It wasn't a full time professional game like it is today. But mm. well, they uh, told him they, get away they, with that they today. told him they told him to go and do that. And I think he's well, he's probably not still dirty about it. But I'll yeah. be dirty about it because he did what they told him to. Uh, exactly. Look, I think, and and I hope he doesn't take this the wrong way. But like for me, I think it's part of his legacy. You know that night. Well, you know what he says. He, he says it's the best thing it ever happened to me because every time people say Wally Lewis, they say Mark Guyer. 100%. <laughs> 100%. Was, that, that's, that, that's that, that moment, you, you that remember, moment the, is in, imprinted in the, my mind. The, the two mm. of them facing off, right, in front of the referee was Eddie Ward. I forget his name now. How good was it? And and Benny Elias there, <laughs> he, he needed to stand on telephone books, right? Yeah. Do you remember that yeah, shot? I remember you got that Ma- shot. You got Guyer and... and um, I remember. And I was, I was, I was hoping... Uh, Mark would just yeah, but he but, didn't. But he didn't, and that makes it even smart. better. Yeah, yeah. that made it even more. He would have got sent off if he did. Yeah, so. mm. yeah. And you know, you know, you know what Mark says. He goes, and the bad thing is, no one remembers uh, Mark O'Connor, O'Connor's kick right uh, at right at the end of the game thing in I the rain. Yeah, a couple of in the rain ago. to yeah. win the game. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. I remember. So I remember. what a special night. Um, and I, I know that he, you know what he, um, after that game, he was he was. He couldn't wait to play Wally again because he blamed him for the send off. Okay, and um, uh, he was playing for the Crushers, well, not the Crushers, the, the Seagulls. Seagulls. Oh, no, Wally day. was playing for Wally the Gold Coast Seagulls. For Captain and Coach, wasn't he? That's right. Yeah. And when they when they when they uh, play them, when Penrith play them, um, he was uh, looking for him on the sheet, and Wally pulled out. Yeah. Okay, and he was dirty. Uh, Mark was dirty. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And um, he goes. He was in the. He's in the uh, bar having a, a, a drink, and he, and, he, and he gets a tap on his shoulder. Okay, and there was well, there was Wally with a jug of beer <laughs> and two uh, two cups. He goes, "Come on, man, let's go and have a drink." And he goes, "Since then, we've been lifelong friends." Okay, so funny that. What a nice story. It's, um, yeah, it's good. For me, it's a wonderful memory. It really is. Yeah. So okay, yeah. we talked about that. He was a top player. He was. Wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, I think yeah. everyone everyone loved Penrith because of him at once. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They just yeah. looked out for what. Well, he's the guy. Yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. He's he's iconic. Yeah. And he had look, and he had he had his fair share of challenges. I mean. Um, a lot of people might not know how close he was to Ben Alexander. Yeah, you know, well, I'm going to throw this out. Ben, um, ben Alexander absolutely not only dis- destroyed uh, that Penrith team, not only shook the foundation 
of uh, Greg. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was his best friend as well. Yeah. yeah. And he said that it took him years to get yeah, over absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Losing a mate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he said that um, he didn't want to play. Uh, mm. And he wasn't playing every week. He was pulling out. And um, some officials there at Penrith uh, rang him up and said, let's have a meeting. He goes, um, you playing this week? He goes, no. Mm. He goes, well, you know what that means. He goes, what? He just rips the contract in front of him. He goes, well, you're not playing for Penrith anymore. He mm. goes, no problem. No problem. Uh, you so, know what? I'm, I'm, I'm swinging for the fences here. Mm. But if there is any way that we can actually get Mark to access this, I'd yeah, love, I'll, I'll love I'll to have him on for a, a five-minute chat, interview, whatever, as a guest over Zoom or something. You know what? Um, Troy had him uh, on his uh, platform yeah, and I was riveted. I know. I know. He's I was, he's also, I was um, riveted. The he's, man. he's opened the gym business as yep, well. So, at Penrith, yeah. Um, I don't know if we can arrange that, but it would be, it would be, it would be great for me. I'll, mm. uh, I'll see what I can do. But uh, Troy had him um, on his uh, on his pod, and um, I started listening. I started listening, and you know when you you can't turn something off. Yeah. Mm. Uh, he's an engaging man. But do you listen to him on Triple M? I do, yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. I do, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he talks, he talked about that, and I don't want to talk about that. I prefer to talk about now about his, yeah. uh, Sorry, about I, his legacy. I, I, no, I no, 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 please, no, no, please. You get me excited. And, and, I've and, still got goosebumps. Yeah, no, good. And that's about MG. Man. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted, yeah. and I had, I, I've got just points here because I, I was assuming, I was hoping that you guys would chip in because mm. yeah. we, we, we were there. We had a front row seat in, into his career. Yeah. Um, after Penrith. Um, he, he kept on ringing his manager and he goes, mate, his manager said, mate, you're damaged goods. He goes, no one wants you. Mm. No one wants you. He went to Balmain, didn't he? He got that? a lifeline. Yeah. He went to Balmain. Um, uh, what's his name? It wasn't Jones. Jonesy. Alan jo- Jones. Alan Jones uh, got him over there. Really going off memory. And he, uh, and he said that he just didn't want to be there. Um, every week for training, he just... He just didn't, he just made excuses. His, his mind wasn't right. Yeah, he wasn't right. Mm. One of the days he's driving to go to, to training, and he goes, he didn't want to be go to training, so he ran up, up somebody's uh, back in the car, and he had a car crash, not to go to training. He goes, thank God. He goes, the the assistant coach was uh, driving next to me and just happened to saw see it, and when he pulled over, he goes, yeah, no, no problem, Marky, I'll I'll, I'll tell uh, Alan that um, he just didn't want him to go to training. I actually did that to get someone's phone number once. <laughs> In the city, <laughs> that's a different sound, hey. but I like it. Nicola. Oh, I it worked. Yeah, I like it. Um, so, um, look, he did anything to get. He out went of to the Western Reds eventually as well. Well, what happened was um, he didn't want to play rugby league still, and uh, he's got a, he got a phone call uh, from a mate of his um, playing for Uminer, mm. and he goes, "Yeah, I'll come to Uminer." That saved his life. He goes, "I went to Uminer, and it's a country town." Mm-hmm. He goes, "He goes, I won't lie." I was targeted. In ev- every run I, I did, I was targeted. Mm. But he got me back to earth. Yeah. Mm. He got me back to earth. Um, and then he goes, um, after that season finished, he goes, I got a phone call from uh, Western Reds. He went, to the, he went to the Reds. He loved it there. Mm-hmm. He was playing good rugby league, if you remember. He was yeah. playing good rugby with league. Brad, Com- Brad McCall was with him too. Brad McCall yeah. was there. Mm. Uh, Super League happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was part of the Super League. I mean, Super League happened and... They were all going to Melbourne and he, he's picked up the phone to Roycey and he goes, Roycey, I want to come home. And Roycey goes, look, mate, you've burnt too many bridges here. He goes, oh, look, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, we can, we can have you. He came down and he met with, the, um, he met with the, the hierarchy and they gave him sort of a trained trial. And after six weeks, they noticed that he was doing all the right things. And he, thank God, finished his career there and... Established himself Good. as a, as a the, the thing legend. About the guy, you know, he played, and and people have to understand that time what rugby league was like at, at that time, right? He played his career on the edge, yeah, yeah. right, which he could do. You know, I mean, blocker. There are a lot of players mm. that did, right? 